Please stand for the call to worship. Hear the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Is risen the time for tears is past. The time for sorrow has ended. We have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto God all the earth. Let us break forth into joyous songs and praises. We shall weep no more, for the stone has been rolled away. Christ is risen from the dead. He is risen indeed. <laughs> sinned and fallen short of the glory of our Lord. So please join me in our prayer of confession. Lord, we confess that we are too often overcome with sadness at the state of the world, at the state of our country, at the state of our environment, at the state of race relations, at the state of our lives, and on and on. We are overcome with sadness because we are focused on the world around us rather than on you. Forgive us, Lord. On this Easter Sunday, may we be reminded that the stone is still rolled away, that the tomb is still empty, and that you still reign in heaven. Send us your spirit to help us remember these things so that in the midst of the state of everything, we may remain focused on you 
and be overcome with joy. Amen. On the first day of the week, Jesus came and stood among the disciples. He said, Peace be with you, and they were filled with joy. Let us receive God's forgiveness and the promise of the Spirit, for Jesus is risen from the dead. We thought for all of you who grew up Baptist, we'd throw in a Baptist hymn. If the people next to you were not singing that, they grew up Presbyterian. If the people next to you were singing that, they grew up Baptist. So, you can introduce yourselves to one another right now as we share the peace of Christ, saying, May the peace of Christ be with you and responding also with you. Hi, my name is Tim, and I am one of the pastors here at Second Presbyterian Church. And while the congregation is greeting one another in the worship service, I just wanted to take a second and welcome you to our worship service. And I pray that whether you're joining us live or later in the week or many weeks from now, that you will be able to experience the love of God and the presence of God through our worship. If you're looking for a spiritual home and are church shopping and checking out several different live streams of several different churches, um, well, then watching our worship service will give you a good idea of who we are as a congregation. It's certainly not all that we are. We offer a lot of service opportunities as well as discipleship opportunities, but watching our worship service will give you a good sense of our personality. For a better sense of who we are, we invite you to come and join us in person at some point when and if you're ready, and know that you will be warmly welcomed here in this family of faith. Also, if you have any spiritual questions, if you're struggling spiritually and have questions or are looking for answers or just want to chat about faith, I am always open to meeting new people and hearing their faith journeys. Just get in touch with me through the contact information on the website, and uh, I'll be glad to set something up with you. Well, back to the service. I hope you have a great day. We good? good? Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Second Presbyterian Church on this Easter Sunday. Everything okay over there? All right. Good to see everyone on this beautiful spring day. My name is Tim, and I'm one of the pastors here at Second Presbyterian, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to worship this morning. Whether you're joining us live or virtually, we pray that you will be able to feel God's spirit of love in this congregation. 
A um, couple of quick announcements. First of all, in the inside of the pews, we have these little black folders that are friendship registers. Uh, pick that up, sign that, pass that down, and then when it gets to the outside, pass it back. That way you'll know with whom you are sitting. And then after worship at the fellowship time, you can introduce yourselves to one another. If you're visiting with us today and want to know more about us, just let us know a little bit more about you there, and we will be in touch. As I said, there is a fellowship time today. It is outside. It's a beautiful day. So following worship right out there in the courtyard, we will have uh, cookies and lemonade and water and coffee. And the cookies today are special Easter cookies. So adults, make sure the young disciples get the special Easter cookies. Don't hog them all. Also, the cross will be out there. If you walk out the door, you'll see it just directly across there. If you want to have your picture made, uh, we hope that you'll hang out for a little bit and visit. Uh, we're worshiping at 1030. Sarah's preaching, so we should be done by 1130. That means you've got plenty of time to beat the Baptist to the brunch. So, uh, today we are receiving our one great hour of sharing offering. There's some information about that in the bulletin. If you feel so inclined, please give to that. Uh, it goes for disaster relief around the world. Next Sunday we're going to be kirking the tartans with the bagpipes and the tartans and the kilts and all the stuff, celebrating our Scottish heritage here as Presbyterians. Um, if you've been, uh, oh wait, first, then, then we have next Wednesday, uh, our second Wednesday dinner, second Wednesday of the month, we have dinner and a program. This uh, dinner is going to be provided by the CARM Catering uh, Program. So. Uh, gives us a chance to support people who are learning how to work in the restaurant uh, industry. And the uh, program will be uh, the pastor from CARM talking to us about that. Uh, if you've been visiting with us for a while and you've been thinking about joining, our next Discovery Lunch is following worship on Sunday, April 28th. So the last Sunday of the month, uh, come to the luncheon. We'll talk a little bit about what it means to be Presbyterian, what it's like to be a member of this congregation. And then if you would like to join, the opportunity will be available to you at that point. But we invite anyone who's maybe even been thinking about joining to show up for that luncheon. It's a free lunch, but we do ask that you RSVP. There's a QR code there. There's a QR code in your bulletin where you can do that. Finally, uh, we are going to be volunteering at CARM on April the 17th. And if you would like to volunteer, uh, you can contact Leonard Bailey or the church office. Leonard, raise your hand there so people know who you are. There's Leonard. Uh, if you want to see Leonard after worship today, you can see him and volunteer. All right, young disciples, come on down. It's time for a few minutes here. We're going to have some fun here on Easter Sunday. All right, guys, we're going to make a circle around the cross. So some people will be on the steps. Some people will be on the floor. Robert. But we're going to stand. Robert. We're not going to sit down. Robert. So everybody stand Robert. and make a circle stand up. around the cross. Stand right here, baby. All right, very good. Good morning. How you doing, Bo Henry? Uh, yeah, okay, me too, buddy. All right, spread out a little bit. Let's make room for everybody. Make a bigger circle. Take a step back. Everybody take a step back. Take a step backwards so that you're next to the person next to you. There you go. All right, now we are going to do today an Easter tradition it's an ancient liturgical dance. It goes all the way back 2,000 years to the tomb when the women got to the tomb on Easter Sunday morning. Do you know what they found? What? Um, nothing. Guards that passed, guards that passed out. That's right. Guards passed out. And who said nothing? Who said nothing? Inside. Somebody said nothing. Inside was nothing. The guards were passed out outside, and inside was nothing. Jesus wasn't there. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. You know how the women knew? Well, at first they put their left hand in. And then they got scared, and they took their left hand out. Then they put their left hand in, and they shook it all about. And then you know what they did? They danced. They danced on Easter morning, and they turned themselves around. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> then they put their right hand in, and they took their right hand out. But then they got brave again, so they put their right hand in, and they shook it all about. And they danced on Easter morning, and they turned themselves around. And that's what it's all about. 
Then they put their left foot in. They put their left foot out. They put their left foot in. And they shook it all about. They danced on Easter morning. They turned themselves around. That's what it's all about. Then they put their right foot in. They put their right foot out. They put their right foot in. And they shook it all about. They danced on Easter morning and they turned themselves around. That's what it's all about. Then they got really brave and they put their head in. They put their head out. They put their head in and they shook it all about. They danced on Easter morning and they turned themselves around. That's what it's all about. Then they got really brave. They thought the tomb was empty. So they went in to see. They put their whole self in. They took their whole self out. They put their whole self in. And they shook it all about. They danced on Easter morning and they turned themselves around. That's what it's all about. And you know what? That is what it's all about. Because Jesus put his whole self into the world for us. And he rose again on Easter Sunday. We put our whole selves in for Jesus Christ every single day. Can you guys do that? Put your whole self in every day? All right, let's have a prayer. I'll say a line, you repeat after me. Dear God, help me always to put my whole self in for you. Amen. All right, you guys can go to Children's Church or you can go sit with your mom and dad, whatever you want to do. Please join with me in prayer. Merciful and gracious Father, we come before you this morning with alleluias on our lips. We lift our voices in praise of you and in thanksgiving for the gift of eternal life through the grace given by the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Alleluia. He is risen. Alleluia. On this day, when we celebrate the risen Christ, let us recognize that daily we fall short of your glory. When we look past those in need, when we neglect those who do not have access to shelter, when we ignore those who are not like us, we fail to feed your sheep. Help us to be more generous with our kindness and our grace. For each day we pass judgment on others. 
others who do not look like us, sound like us, dress like us, think like us, love like us, or worship like us. And we do not merely pass judgment, we condemn. We allow hatred to enter our daily lives. Help us to change our ways. Help us to change our attitude. Help us to live closer to what you would have us to be. Forgive us for our failings and renew in us your will and your love. Let this Easter be the time of our rebirth in your vision for us. Let this Easter have love reborn in our hearts so that we can share generously. Let this Easter mark the end of our condemnations and the beginning of our renewed mission to share the message of your love. Let us now be more concerned with sharing the good news of your glory and the life everlasting through Jesus Christ. Alleluia. And please hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This morning's Hebrew Bible reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of all hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
don't even need to preach after an anthem like that. Our gospel reading this morning comes from John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, She bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're finishing up our Lenten sermon series on this Easter day, a series we're calling Jesus's Most Pointed Questions. And we end on this very question from that very first Easter day. Woman, Why are you weeping? Man, if I had a dollar for every time I had been asked that question, (laughs) I would have a lot of dollars. Is that why I got this text to preach on, this question? It fits. We meet Mary in this moment at the tomb. It's early in the morning. It's dark. John has told us as much. She comes alone, prepared to quietly, solemnly finish the process of burying her crucified friend, to grieve this painful loss. But when she arrives, as we know, the stone that was covering the tomb had been moved, and temporary chaos ensues. John tells us of the back and forth. Mary runs to Simon Peter and the other disciple, and then those two take off running to the tomb to see it for themselves. They both eventually go into the tomb to see for themselves that Jesus is, in fact, not there and then they return home. And John doesn't tell us that they ran home, but with all the energy that has burst forth from the story so far, I imagine they do run back to where they came from. Or maybe they skip, or at the very least, they leave with a little spring in their step. But when the dust settles from this foot race to the tomb, and Simon Peter and the other disciples have returned returned home, Mary remains. Mary remains outside the tomb, And standing outside the tomb, she weeps. We can imagine that she weeps for the loss of her friend and teacher. Maybe she weeps because she's overwhelmed by the fact that his body is not where she expected it to be, and because she seems to be the only one who's worried about finding it. Maybe she weeps because she feels lost, lonely, aimless. Maybe it's all of the above. But Mary, overwhelmed by her grief, stands at the tomb, and weeps. We don't know how long she stood there weeping and wondering what to do next, but John tells us that as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. She clears the tears from her eyes long enough to lean in and make sure 
that all of this isn't just a bad dream. One of those dreams that you can't seem to get out of no matter how many times you wake up and fall back asleep. One of those dreams that wears you out even as your body sleeps. And when you wake, you realize it was just a dream, but you're both exhausted and relieved. Mary wipes the tears from her eyes long enough to bend over to look into the tomb, where she sees not the body of her friend as she may have hoped, but two angels sitting where Jesus' body had been. And these angels are the first to ask her the question, Woman, why are you weeping? Now it might be worth noting here that Mary doesn't seem alarmed by these angels. She doesn't seem relieved to see them either. She has sort of a non-reaction to them, which is a little bit strange. But John seems to want to waste no time on what her reaction might have been. Because as she answers their question, John tells us that she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, though she didn't know that it was Jesus. And he asks her the question again, Woman, why are you weeping? Now, if this were me, I would have been like, why does everyone keep asking me that? <laughs> but Mary is on a mission. She just wants to find out where Jesus' body has been taken so that she can properly care for it. Sir, if you, the gardener, have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away, Mary says. And G Jesus simply says to her, Mary. There's a game that I can remember playing during my youth group days. It works best when done in a really large group, so like a multi-church retreat or a youth conference, that type of thing. It's sort of a race. Two people are paired up. One stands on one side of a big open area. The other stands on the opposite side of a big open area, like a fellowship hall. And between them are lots of different obstacles. Chairs, sports equipment, couches, beanbags, tables, and a whole host of other people. The goal is to get the one partner to the same side as the other partner, but the catch is that the partner crossing the room has to have their eyes closed, and the stationary partner has to direct them using only their voice. Now the other catch is that the room is really, really loud once this game gets going. All of the stationary partners are shouting instructions. All of the people in the middle of the room are talking and creating additional obstacles for the pairs trying to communicate with one another. It's utter chaos. But the hack to this game that you figure out after years of youth ministry is shouting out the name of the person you're trying to direct, the person who has their eyes closed. As soon as they hear their name, you can see the person perk up they have new hope that they might actually make it to their final destination. When they hear their name, they're able to pick out the voice that they need to listen for amidst the chaos. And when they recognize that voice, it makes it easier to drown out all of the other noise in the room. On that Easter morning, Mary stood at the tomb, her head a swirl of chaotic emotions, the noise of her grief overshadowing the voices and the sights around her until Jesus says this one simple thing, Mary. He calls her by name, and the chaos of overwhelming grief falls away. She hears his voice anew and recognizes who it is that has asked her the question. Teacher, she says, it's really you. It's not until this moment that she recognizes what's really going on. It's not until Jesus says her name that she understands the joy of Easter morning, that her friend, her teacher, has risen as he said he would. Friends, this morning we stand at the empty tomb with Mary. Maybe we, like Mary, come to the tomb, our heads a swirl of chaotic emotions. Maybe we come to the tomb distracted and confused and overwhelmed. Maybe we come to the tomb like Simon Peter and the other disciple, running with all we have to be the first to see it for ourselves. Maybe we come to the tomb with excitement and joy and anticipation. However we come to the tomb, the outcome is the same. The tomb is empty. Jesus is no longer there, but he stands with us, calling us by name calling us out of our grief and our confusion and our despair, calling us in the midst of the chaos and excitement and the anticipation, calling us by name, calling us to recognize him, calling us to recognize the good news of the empty tomb. He is not here. 
He is risen, and there is reason to rejoice. Friends, there is much in this world to overwhelm us. There is much in this world that seeks to drown out the noise that is right there, drown out the joy that is right there in front of us. And without the resurrection, tragedy triumphs and our problems prevail. Without the resurrection, we walk around as those who have no hope. But on this Easter morning, Jesus calls us by name, Mary. He snaps us out of our despair, out of our grief, out of our blindness. He recognizes all that there is to overwhelm us, just as he did for Mary. And he reminds us that the tomb is empty. He reminds us that there is reason to rejoice. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, friends, let us continue our worship with the giving of our gifts and ourselves.
Please pray with me. Dear Lord, please accept these humble gifts from our hands, derived from the talent you've given us, for we know all things good come from you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now please join me in our affirmation of faith from the Confession of Belhar. We believe that God's life-giving word and spirit has conquered the powers of sin and death, and therefore also of reconciliation and hatred, bitterness and enmity, that God's life-giving word and spirit will enable the church to live in a new obedience, which can open new possibilities of life for society and the world. he is not here. He is risen. And Christ calls each of us by name, reminding us that there is reason to rejoice. So go out into the world to rejoice and tell others the good news. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Let all God's people say, Amen. Sing on.